Ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video. And you ladies know I am not one to do one of these drill and drag type of videos. That is not nor has ever been really the goal of me or this channel. But um, I'm showing you a picture of a part of my yard. Okay, this is a picture of a part of my yard. And why... Why is this upsetting? I told you ladies in my last gardening videos that my husband is very particular about our yard waste. But yet, why, why does my yard look like this? This is where the drill and the drag is going to come in. You know that in certain municipalities that there are rules regarding yard waste. So what me and my spouse have to do is coordinate. So if I'm going to turn over flower beds, he may have to coordinate when he's going to cut the grass or rake the leaves. If he's going to trim trees, I may have to delay um, turning over um, and pruning my garden and turning over the soil. It's just a way to make sure that we're in our allotted amount of yard waste that the city approved for us to leave at the curb, because if not, we can incur fees or tickets, or we have to um, load it up and take it to the proper disposal facility. So with this situation, we now are inconvenienced because we have a neighbor who has far exceeded the amount of yard waste that she is allotted because she does not have the help of the men in her family. So now we have to take that on and put it into and integrate it into our allotment for yard waste because she is going to be unable to transport it herself to the disposal facility or take on the fees that are incurred for having an additional amount of yard waste. We're in vicinity to an incredible amount of unprecedented growth as far as our real estate is concerned. Okay, these are some of the pictures I promised you of the incoming Tesla factory that's moving to Austin. This is not too far from where we live and it's really been impacting our property values. Now we knew when we moved here that there was is going to be zoned for some industrial, some commercial and uh, residential real estate growth in this area of the city, which is why we bought a fixer upper in the section of town where we bought it because we knew that appreciation was coming. No one expected it to be to this scale. No one was expecting something that this vast um, to be moving into our area. So a lot of families are very diligent about how they're maintaining their homes and their properties. Families are being extra diligent simply because we're seeing some of the fastest appreciating home values in the country right now in this particular area of Austin. Um, this is some unprecedented growth. Some families are do, um, fixing their properties up and cashing in. Some people are um, just entertaining foreign investors who are doing the fix and flips for them. And they're just leaving things as is. But those of us who live here see all the new growth and we want to make sure we're able to capitalize on it, whether we keep it or whether we sell. So this is just such a great opportunity for us, for our children and their future and so many Austinites. But it does come with some challenges. Most of the people in this area even up until three and four years ago, were homeowners. Now we're seeing a lot of renters come in. Um, we're seeing a lot of foreign investors and out-of-state investors buy up a lot of these properties. Um, we're seeing increases in property tax because of the quick and growing home appreciation values. Um, even we've had to refinance and look at different homeowners insurance policies and things to keep up with the growth um, of the cost of our escrow. So everyone's really feeling the pinch. And, you know, people are crying and screaming gentrification. But the reality is with growth comes opportunity. And uh, this is where the drag and the drill gonna come in. 
not everybody's really poised to take advantage of this opportunity. Gentrification comes with some very harsh realities and I've survived it before. I've been through a gentrification before. Um, but he, listen, y'all, if anyone is aware of gentrification, it's our black elderly. It's our elderly. These are the generation who had been redlined, who maybe were not able to buy in every single section of the capital of Texas in their heyday when they were young and buying real estate. We are very well aware of the realities of gentrification, especially its impact on the elderly. Here's the drag. Here's the drill. Now, if you know you're in a fast appreciating area, and if you know that your nana or that your granny is sitting on a landmine, why are you not in the position to help her capitalize on it? Why are you not even helping her to maintain her property that she has worked so hard to buy and leave as a legacy for you? You sure enough can come over to eat. You sure enough can come over to sleep over and stay over for extended periods of time, rent free when you need a place to stay. And you sure enough comfortable with dropping your kids off for her to watch when it's your weekend to have your kids and then complain about your baby mama. You're welcome then. You're welcome to take on the burdens of the elderly when it comes to the realities of redlining, of gentrification, but why is it that you are not quick to go drive your Nana down to the city, down to the county to fill out the paperwork so that she can get discounted property taxes because she's over 55? Why are you so quick to speak on her oppression, but not do anything about that broken stoop or that cracked sidewalk that could be a fall hazard for your elderly auntie? Why are you so quick to talk about the oppression and the realities of gentrification and take the mic during these city council meetings, but yet leave your grandmother's grass uncut? Why is it when you know the realities of the, that there are a lot of headhunters coming through this area, a lot of real estate bird dogging happening, and that they're quick to put people into code enforcement, but yet you don't rake the leaves, cut the grass, or trim the trees? Why is it with all of these talks of severe weather and tornadoes and severe thunderstorms that's happening in this area that you know that your grandma or your auntie needs new siding, needs a new roof? How come you ain't calling Jake from State Farm to get an appraisal to get these repairs done so they can cut her a check? But you're real quick to take on her oppression and talk about gentrification. Now, here we come to this yard waste. This is not the trimmings of our trees. These are not the leaves that have been raked from our lawn. These are the tree trimmings and the leaf raking that was placed onto a tarp and dragged to our end of the property because my husband yet again had gone to our elderly black neighbor and trimmed her trees once we had saw the forecast knowing that her home could potentially be in danger. I made this exact same video around the exact same time last year, talking about trucks and manhood. How when this severe weather hits, these fools over here wanna talk all day about some gentrification this, gentrification that, wanna talk about code enforcement is discriminating, but don't pick up a tree trimmer, a lawn mower, a hedge clipper, no quick creep to fix these banisters and stoops and stairs and sidewalks but want to talk about some gentrification, knowing good and well that there are California and foreign real estate investors walking through all the time, looking and calling code enforcement when we see these things, but yet can't pick up a lawnmower. But then when my husband, out of the kindness of his heart and out of his generosity, and of course, you know, with that Native American ancestry, that Native ancestry, um, there's like a, 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 they hold the elderly in very high regard. So, of course, he's not really going to set that kind of boundary, right? He's just going to be like, well, you know, Miss Brenda need her trees trimmed and I'm going to go trim Miss, Miss Brenda trees and, and, and rake up some of her, her leaves, okay? Um, you know, Mr. Ray from down the street, also the same thing, like that Hispanic man with the indigenous ancestry, you know, uh, he's retired, he got a ride on lawnmower, but like, you know, let me just go around and, you know, cut the grass, whatever, whatever. I'm just down the street and I love riding my lawnmower. You know what I mean? So other people are sitting over here stepping up, but yet you're going to complain. 
You're going to complain about the tickets from code enforcement. You're going to complain about the damage to the siding and the roof. You're going to complain, but not do anything for the men who are out here helping you out of the kindness of their heart, in honor of their tradition, in honor of their culture, but complain about some gentrification. And I did this last year, the same complaint last year. Is it unfair that code enforcement is harder um, on these people because they know that they're trying to push them out so that they can be sold for to more lucrative property management companies or other investors or to make fix and flips more available? Yeah, it's unfair. But if anybody knows anything about respectability politics, uh, it's those who survived the civil rights movement. This is why they marched in suits in their Sunday best because they understood that they had to present a certain appearance. This is why you should keep your Nana's grass cut. This is why you should keep your auntie's trees trimmed because you have to keep up the respectability politics of the realities of what it is we're facing. They understand this more than anything. So you're quick to wave their oppression, but you're not quick to put into action how they have put things into action to play the game. And I'm sick of these neighborhood action committee and these neighborhood advocacy groups where you have all of these black men whose names ain't on nobody's mortgage complaining about how these young black women want to live in these nice condos downtown um, because they're single and they don't want to go and buy grandma's house or help fix up grandma's house. OK, or how these young families or single moms want to move out to these master plan communities with the nice pools and the nice neighborhoods and use these USDA first time home buyer grants that you know put master plan communities and subdivisions on converted farmland because they can give their kids safer schools and safer neighborhoods and their dollar goes further as opposed to trying to have to compete with these foreign investors. They go and blame these black women, but these black men whose names ain't on these mortgages is always the ones taking the megs at these damn community action meetings. Always the ones complaining about discrimination and gentrification that they haven't even lived through. They never signed none of the paperwork for this, but yet they wanna be so finger pointy at the young people in these neighborhoods who are moving out, the young families who've decided to take their, their money elsewhere. They've done nothing to fix these schools. They've done nothing, nothing to fix up the municipalities that are surrounding these neighborhoods. And now all of a sudden that foreign investors are coming in or that Tesla's moving in. Now you wanna complain and say something. I never had to worry about the school districts. My kids were already in private school by the time we moved here. Yeah, the, the commute is a little bit more inconvenience because it's like 20 minutes each way. So yeah, it is a little bit inconvenient, but we understood that with kids who are close to the age where they'll be driving and then number two, um, the opportunity that this was gonna present us and them for their future. We understood what we were getting into, but yet you can't say that to them. You can't say that to these men. Why are you not taking care of this thing that is your legacy? You want to talk all day about some generational wealth, but you're not doing anything to build it. Here they are complaining about how winter is coming for black women. It damn sure is coming for black women. That black woman being your auntie. And you know, with last year's severe weather and them predicting a lot more of the same, you ain't even buy a goddamn generator. You know what? It just is that thing, that thing that us Gen X black women do when we scowl up our face, look you up and down and say out of our mouth, you's a sorry motherfucker. Because you are, you sorry. You wanna talk out one side of your face about winter is coming. You wanna talk out of the other side of your face about generational wealth, but you ain't doing a damn thing to preserve it. So yeah, you're damn right winter is coming. And last I checked, your auntie still ain't got a generator. This is Mocha Mommy and I'll see you in the next video.